This couple was arrested after these siblings were found deceased in a suitcase. Five-year-old Jesus and three-year-old Yesenia Dominguez went missing in the summer of 2018. But it wasn't until January 20th of this year when police received a call about a container filled with concrete found inside a storage unit in Colorado. After investigating, they found the remains of Yesenia encased in the concrete. They then began searching for Jesus and in February of this year, they found his body in a suitcase inside a car at a scrapyard. This car belonged to Karina Minjares, who was a girlfriend of these children's father, Jesus Dominguez Sr. The father of his children and his girlfriend were arrested and charged with two counts of first-degree murder and two counts of abuse of a corpse. Normal-looking photos with disturbing backstories, part two. This Snapchat was the last photo ever taken of Sydney Loof, a woman who was killed by her Tinder date. Her body was cut into 14 different pieces, and when it was brought back to the morgue, it was in six different bags. This man was transferring oxygen tanks for 12 boys in their coach. He didn't have enough oxygen for himself, however, and died after losing consciousness in one of the cave's passageways. This man is a sea sagawa, an actual cannibal from Japan. This photo was taken by a Japanese magazine after he was released from prison for insanity. The man in this photo, Franklin Floyd, married a woman and had custody over her children while she was in prison for 30 days. The girl in this photo is one of her children, whom Floyd kidnapped to start a new life with. He left the other siblings behind, and after this photo was taken, he went to another state, changed both of their names, and claimed her as his biological daughter. Later, he went on to marry her. This is what would happen if all humans fell asleep for one year, part two. Up first, after about two weeks, it wouldn't be good at all. All food in everybody's houses would begin to go bad. All the freezers and refrigerators would shut down, which would result in spoiled, wasted, and rotting food. Next up, after 15 days, all domestic pets like cats and dogs would begin to struggle extremely badly. They would begin to starve and roam the streets, which would then result in them eating each other for food because they're so hungry. After 20 days, all farmland would be destroyed. This is because all the crops would be eaten by wild animals, since there is no humans around to stop them or keep them out. Next up, after about 35 days, all cities would begin to be covered by plants. They would be growing underground on the streets, sidewalks, and buildings. Virtually anywhere. This would then result in insects being in places they should never have been, like our houses and apartments which just wouldn't be good at all. Just imagine waking up after a year of sleeping and seeing everything you loved and owned completely covered by insects and plants. These are eight horrifying facts that will probably keep you up at night. There are thousands of old diseases frozen in the glaciers of the world and global warming will eventually release them all. If a person dies in their costume at Disney, like Mickey Mouse, they have to be sat down on a bench so it looks like they're resting. Climate change is making spiders bigger. Some female spiders allow their young to eat them alive. Tooth in the eye surgery is when surgeons put a tooth in a blind person's eye to restore their sight. It was pioneered in the 1960s and it actually works and it's still being done today. The chances of a successful CPR outside of a hospital is only 7%. Cell phones are 10 times dirtier than a toilet seat. When you suddenly wake up during the night without any reason, there was someone or something staring at you. Yeah, there's a lot more, like for part 12. This is how cartoons look in different countries. In the movie Zootopia, animals host a new show. In America, the host is a moose, but in China, he's replaced with a panda. In Australia, he's a koala, and in Japan, he's a tanuki. Moving on, in this scene in Inside Out, the main character, Rally, refuses to eat broccoli. But in other parts of the world, like Japan, the kids actually love broccoli, so they replace the broccoli with green peppers. In a different scene in Inside Out, when Rally's dad is daydreaming about hockey, only Americans actually see this. This scene has actually changed the football for the rest of the world because it's the most popular sport on the planet. In Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear gives a speech in front of the American flag, but in other countries, this would seem a little weird, so for the rest of the world, they replaced the flag with the world globe. Next, in Pokemon, while Ash and Brock enjoy this on a Gary, in the American version, they actually call it a jelly donut to appeal to Americans. Next, in this scene in Inside Out, where Bing Bong reads a sign and points to the letters, not only did they translate the sign for other languages, but they even went as far as to reanimate Bing Bong so that he points to the letters right to left and 
instead of left to right to accommodate the languages that read that way. Moving on, Rochelle from Plains changes her name and appearance depending on whatever country the movie is being shown in. So in the UK, Michelangelo's nunchucks are actually replaced with a rope because Britain wants to avoid surges of violence. In Monsters University, Randall makes cupcakes that spell out Be My Pal, but they're actually replaced with smiley faces around the world to avoid translating the icing to different languages. And lastly, Minty Zaka from Wreck-It Ralph is changed to Minty Sakura in the Japanese version, and she also gets a Japanese makeover. Disturbing facts that will ruin your day. There are between 25 and 50 active serial killers in the United States at any given time, according to the FBI. If you live a full life, you're going to have shed over 100 pounds of your skin. Cruise ships are legally required to have morgues for the passengers that inevitably will die on each trip. A Nightmare on Elm Street was inspired by a true story. A boy was having disturbing nightmares and refused to sleep for multiple days. The same night that he succumbed to exhaustion, he died in his sleep but not before screaming for help in the middle of the night because of his nightmares. If you try to grab the brain in its natural state, it will fall apart. When you see scientists pick up a brain, it's because they've used chemicals to harden it. There are still 40 million people worldwide that are slaves. Three in four of those are women, and one in four are children. Follow for more. This teacher essayed a 13-year-old student and then claimed she was pregnant. This investigation began on November 2023 when this boy's parents contacted his school after they discovered inappropriate messages between 27-year-old Adriana Rulon and their 13-year-old child. Adriana was a teacher at Antonio Gonzalez Middle School in Texas when she began this relationship. The 13-year-old stepfather became suspicious after the boy spent more than $130 in a store. When he asked the child where he was getting all this money from, he told them that his friends gave it to him. His stepfather had a hard time believing this, so he went through his phone and that's when he found the inappropriate text messages and photos from Adriana. He also noticed large amounts of money coming in through Cash App from Adriana, which explains the purchases this boy was making. His stepfather became more worried when he saw a message that Adriana was pregnant. And what's disturbing is that the essay was happening everywhere, including during school hours in her classroom. Adriana eventually confessed to everything and she even said that she's heard of these cases happening to other people, but she never thought that it would happen to her. This is the terrifying image of a woman cowering on her rooftop trying to escape an intruder when he pops up behind her. What happened to this woman is like something of a horror film. It was September 2014 and Melora Rivera was at her home in California. Unfortunately for her though, she was not home alone on the day in question, although she was initially unaware of this. Melora worked as an actress and actually had a part in the Whitney Houston film Sparkle. She was in her bed when she noticed somebody in her property. He had apparently broken a panel to reach inside and unlock one of the doors. Terrified, the woman tried to escape onto the roof to alert authorities. She managed to balance up on the roof and ring 911 before, terrifyingly, he jumped up and appeared behind her. This image was captured by a passerby. Thankfully, police arrived on the scene and the man was arrested. He was identified as 29-year-old Christian Hicks. He was swiftly arrested and the woman was rescued off the roof by the fire brigade. Did you know that the sun loses 350 billion tons of mass every single day? And it will continue to do so until one day its outward pressure gets so strong that the sun's gravity no longer resists it and the sun begins to expand so much that it swallows up Earth completely. There's also a type of star known as vampire stars that do exactly as their name suggests and consumes another star before they explode into a supernova. 250 million light years away from us is a place in space known as the Great Attractor. And even though we don't know what it is, we do know that it's pulling our our galaxy and a bunch of other galaxies towards it at speeds of 600 kilometers per second. In 2012, we missed a solar storm by just one week. If that storm had been ejected one week earlier, it would have caused a global blackout so devastating that we'd still be recovering from it today. Also, black holes can be mobile, and we found one of these space-time eating machines moving at 3 million miles per hour. 59-year-old Karina Smith filled a bucket with boiling water in the middle of the night. She mixed it with sugar to make it more viscous. Then she went to her bedroom and poured it over her 80-year-old husband, Michael Baines's body. He got skin grafts for his major burns, but he later did pass away. 
13 years earlier, her son had committed S-word. Her son had previously been in prison for assault, and he told her that it was a P-word who had touched him. So in 2020, when his sister, Corinna's daughter, told her that her father had been assaulting her and her brother for years when they were children, Corinna put the pieces together. After pouring the water on him, Corinna went to a neighbor around nine doors down and said, I really hurt him, I think I've killed him. His skin was peeling off when he was found and he told officers, I just want to die. Her sentence was life in prison for murder. She pled manslaughter because she just lost control and anger after what her daughter had told her, but since it took 13 minutes for the kettle of water to boil, that was like overturned. It was also alleged that she went nine doors down to a neighbor that she apparently wasn't very close to just to waste time. Therefore, it was concluded that it was a murder case with revenge as a motive. This was a really fast video, but I saw this last night on freaking Reddit of all places, and I just needed to get it out of my head. <laughs> like, this whole story is just really sick. I hope the daughter is doing okay wherever she is, because, like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> this picture. This is why if I ever have kids, I'll never let them use the bathroom alone. A seven-year-old girl and her mom were headed to Target, and she was getting some clothes for school. Her mom also wanted to grab some snacks for movie night. So while her mom went to go grab popcorn and other snacks, she told her daughter to go pick out clothes for school. When her daughter finally finished and picked out the clothes, she went up to her mom and said something strange happened. A sad pale lady had came up to her, <laughs> telling her that she wished she could have her own daughter that looked just like her. The mom, who thought the daughter was just joking around, laughed it off and said, let's go. While heading to the register, the daughter shook her mom and said, that's the lady who told me she wanted a daughter just like me pointing at a mannequin. The mom laughed, thinking the daughter was still being silly. You know how kids like have wild imaginations, always playing around. While at the register, the daughter had to go to the bathroom. So the mom told her to hurry up. It was only a couple hours down, by the way. While in the bathroom, the daughter texted the mom saying the pale lady's in here who wanted a daughter. The mom trying to get in a rush back home to her other kids said, hurry up, we have to go, stop playing around. 10 minutes later and the daughter never came out. The mother who was waiting outside the bathroom at this time rushes in the bathroom to see what the heck is going on. The daughter was nowhere to be found. She even checked the stars to see if her daughter was hiding standing on a toilet or something on one of the stalls she found her daughter's cell phone on the floor by the way if you made it this far in the video comment down below your favorite fruit mine is mangoes when she checked her phone this was the last image found in it police still to this day have no explanation on what happened to that little girl Pass my drink that's on the table, please. Thanks. Let's talk about all the allegations made against Dan Schneider in the new Quiet On Set documentary trailer. Investigation Discovery is releasing a four-part documentary series that goes over the alleged misconduct and abuse that happened under Dan Schneider's reign at Nickelodeon. And the first allegation we see is workplace misconduct. Working for Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. 
Dan's treatment of people on his shows was an open secret. And we know that around this time, the two female writers from The Amanda Show were uncomfortable around Schneider because he was constantly asking them for massages, something that he himself admitted. Another allegation that's made is that these three men were known predators who were working at the network at the time, kind of alluding to the fact that this was a systemic problem happening at the network. The trailer also hints at the fact that the documentary may have gotten a bombshell interview for this, someone who was being coached by other child actors at the time and is now ready to tell their story. Some have suggested that it may be Jeanette McCurdy because in her book, she alludes to the fact that there was inappropriate conduct on set of iCarly, and also that she was given hush money to never talk about it. And because she had previously filed a complaint with Ariana Grande against a producer of Sam and Cat claiming that there was inappropriate conduct on set. And some have suggested that it's Alexa Nicholas because she has publicly stated that she never felt comfortable working around Schneider and that working for him was traumatizing. But the documentary comes out on March 17th and I for one am very curious what it has to say. Just keep watching up behind me on that ledge. Oh, sorry about that. He was, he was doing a. Oh, there he is. Okay, let's. <laughs> there. Ah, well, at least we've got a shot of of one. Hard to tell. Oh, okay. Right, that doesn't look good. There's another one up there. Um, right, that doesn't look friendly. That one's the male. So, I thought that was the female burrow, so I don't know quite what he's doing there. Where has he gone? Behind those trees there. Oh, ooh, he's off. Let's just see if I can. I passed away trying to put a TV in my stomach. Hello, I am Poe, one of the Teletubbies. You know who I am, but you don't know my dark history. Before all the sunshine and happiness, there was darkness and loneliness. We were four children stuck in a Bulgarian mental facility they called Teletubby Land, where they experimented on psychotic children. They isolated us into dark rooms. La La, the yellow tubby, was a child with a facial disfigurement, making her smile all the time. Tinky Winky, the purple tubby, was a deaf child that was tied to a fence outside and suffered frostbite. Dipsy was a malnourished child that was constantly sick. And me, Po, I fell into a fire when I was young. Our only source of comfort in our rooms was our little televisions. But as part of an experiment, they told us they were going to take them away. We didn't want that to happen, so we came up with the idea to put them into our stomachs. They were too big to swallow, so we tried to cut them open and put the television inside, but we didn't make it. Remember where we came from. Remember our suffering. This kid was missing for four years before people realized something was going on. Part three. If you haven't seen part one or two, go watch them right now. When Sean was 11 years old, he was captured by a man named Michael Devlin. Michael Devlin held him captured for four years and tortured him every day. He even forced him to do horrific acts and recorded them. And for months, police were looking for Sean, but they had no idea where he was. To the outside world, Devlin was a father figure to Sean. He even taught him how to drive. He went all over with him, but in private, it was different. When they were alone, Devlin would torture Sean. But Devlin wasn't satisfied, so he kidnapped another kid named Ben. Ben was crying in the car, so people reported Devlin to the police. The police then came into Devlin's home to investigate what Devlin was actually up to. Devlin was too scared, so he confessed to the police. And while the police were looking for Ben, they actually found Sean as well. Both Sean and Ben both went back to their families. Devlin was sentenced to prison. But something even worse happened to Devlin in prison. If you want to know what happened to Devlin in prison, make sure you follow my Instagram for part four. Thanks for watching.
Let's talk about what the show Griselda on Netflix gets right and wrong about the life of Griselda Blanco. Because the show works really hard to make her look like a victim when that is not who she was. And a reminder that if you want a deep dive on her life before watching the show, definitely listen to this week's episode. Let's start with the first episode when Griselda is covering up a wound that she got from her husband Alberto. And that is correct, Alberto did fire his weapon at Griselda, but it did not happen how it happens in the show. Because in the show, Alberto makes Griselda sleep with his brother to wipe out their debt. And she's so disgusted by this that she goes after Alberto and he gets a shot in, but ultimately she's the only one that leaves that interaction alive. But in real life, Griselda was not letting anyone tell her what to do, especially Alberto. What really happened was Alberto and Griselda were fighting because Griselda didn't like the way that Alberto was running their illegal operation. So one night she takes her posse and she shows up to the club that he's at. The two ended up getting in a fight in the parking lot and let's just say Alberto left that fight in a body bag. And this is when she goes to Miami, which the show gets right. But in the show, she goes to Miami with no money and they show her like crammed in a guest bedroom with her kids while she's trying to make some money. When in reality, when Griselda went to Miami, she was richer than most people in America. Her net worth was said to be around $500 million and she owned a mansion that had a bronze statue of her inside. And there's maybe something to say here about how Hollywood makes women look battered and bruised in order to make them more understandable, but that is not who Griselda was. And if you want an overview on her reign of terror, listen to this week's episode. This is the victim of child abuse who hunted other abusers down and attacked them with a hammer. Jason Vukovic was born in Anchorage, Alaska. His mum was a single mother who later married a man called Larry Fulton. Far from Larry becoming a father figure to Jason, he actually became his abuser. Larry adopted Jason and used the family's Christian faith to his advantage. He would treat late night prayer sessions as an opportunity to abuse Jason. He also subjected Jason to severe physical beatings. Jason's brother was also abused by Larry and the pair experienced horrific beatings one after another. Shockingly, although Larry actually was charged with abuse of a minor in 1989, he didn't actually go to jail. The boys were left in the hands of an offender, so they decided to take matters into their own hands. They decided to flee the abuse by simply running away. Now, Jason was 16 at this point and had no way to earn a living. The brothers went to Washington State and decided to commit crime to make money. Jason ended up moving around numerous times and ended up with a record including theft and assault. In 2008, he moved back to Alaska and in June 2016, he hatched a plan. He selected some S offenders off the local registry to target. He picked three men, Charles Alby, Andres Barbosa and Wesley Demarest. First heading to 68 year old Charles's house, he forced him to sit on his bed, confronted him, hit him, robbed him and then fled. Just days later, he showed up at Andres's house, threatened him with a hammer and punched him. He then targeted the third man on his list. He forced his way into Wesley's home around 1am one evening. He actually had two women with him at the time to carry out this attack. He demanded the man got to his knees, but Wesley refused. Jason ended up hitting him in the head with a hammer. As he did so, he stated, I'm an avenging angel. He explained that he was getting justice for the people he'd hurt. He stole items from the house and fled the scene. When Wesley regained consciousness, he called police and Jason was arrested. Wesley suffered extreme brain injuries following the attack. Jason was charged with multiple offences and was sentenced to 28 years in prison. He got five years suspended and another five on probation. Jason did try to appeal due to his PTSD from his child abuse, but this was denied. Jason now tries to deter other victims of abuse from doing what he did. He stated, I began my life sentence many, many years ago. It was handed down to me by an ignorant, hateful, poor substitute for a father. He said, I now face losing most of the rest of my life due to a decision to lash out at people like him. 